Welcome to Apple on the Road. Heute machen wir mal ein etwas anderes Video. Und zwar ein Video in Englisch. Ja, wir haben ein Pärchen aus Kanada getroffen und natürlich sprechen die mehr Englisch. That's why we're gonna switch and we meet a lot of people on the road who speaks just English and that's why we're gonna do some more videos in English on our channel. But we're gonna try to speak slow and make it good for you to understand. But please leave us a comment. Lasst uns ein ja. irgendwas da. Schrei schreibt uns in die Kommentare, wie gut ihr das versteht. Ob es euch gefällt oder nicht. Ja. Und gebt uns dazu ein Feedback. Aber jetzt erstmal zu Karen und Jason. <lacht> So um, that's Kara and Jason from Canada. Um, we met them here in Oaxaca on the campground. We arrived four weeks ago and they drive this awesome off-road off -road car. And yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit about you guys, how you started, where you traveled. Yeah, so this is all Kara's idea. <laughs> about seven years ago, she told me, I need you to build a big overland truck to travel the world. So. Uh, We bought this truck, it was originally a crane for lifting heavy things and we used it uh, in that way for two or three years to save up money and then uh, over the course of three or four years more we built the truck from the ground up, rebuilt everything, new engine, or rebuilt the engine and uh, built everything you see here, which you're going to get a tour of shortly. And uh, then in December 2018 we sold our house and everything we owned and hit the road, headed south out of the cold Saskatchewan winter, uh, headed for Baja that first winter, and then once it started warming up in April and May, I uh, went north, went to Overland Expo 2019, where we presented our vehicle in the DIY showcase, and then up north, as far north as you can drive in Canada, actually, to Tuktoyaktuk on the Arctic Ocean, mm -hmm. and then south again through, the, through Canada and the States, went to Baja, ferried over to mainland Mexico, Uh, and that was beginning of 2020. We did as much as we could early in the year. And then of course, COVID hit. And uh, as you guys know, many of the uh, facilities are shut down. Everything's in lockdown. Uh, in the beginning of the year, grocery stores would only allow you to buy produce and nothing more. And only essential services are open. So uh, we spent the first part of the year waiting that out. And now Guatemala just opened. Hopefully things open up later in the year and we can continue our journey south. Yeah. So Jason, tell us what truck is it, what engine have it, how much horsepower is it? Mm -hmm. Good questions. So this is a 2003 F550. Uh, it has the international 7.3 liter turbo diesel, uh, which in North American markets, uh, it's one of the uh, top five respected engines up there with the Cummins 5.9 and all the, the ones that were proven over time to be workhorses that just kept on going. Yeah. So. Uh, we chose that and also because it will run on the high sulfur diesel that's more commonly available down here. Some of the newer vehicles with uh, emission systems and diesel particulate filters uh, have a lot of problems with the fuel south of in Mexico and, and further south. So we went with that engine, uh, totally rebuilt it, uh, upgraded all the internal components as we could and then uh, more recently actually in this campground in this very spot we installed a a 73 millimeter stage two turbo, uh, high pressure injection pump, 3000 PSI and three gallons per minute high pressure injection oil. So with all the parts we have on it, it should be making around 500 horsepower, which sounds like a big number, but it is a seven ton truck. So it's still a, a very powerful turtle. Yeah. Not too bad, no. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the body appears to be a 2010 uh, front end, and that's because we have a fiberglass body kit that uh, replaced the original steel body on the mm -hmm. truck, and that was because these come out quite a bit further than original. They, they flare outward, and that's to cover our big tires. Which brings me to our tires. These are custom-built super single wheels made by Rickson Wheel and they have a custom offset so that the front wheel can be flipped over backwards and run on the back because oh, okay. the, yeah. the, it was originally a dual rear wheel yeah. truck and so that allows us to have single rear wheels on the back and carry only one spare and of course very prominently 
uh, big, big tires. These are Continental MPT81 uh, 335 8020. So big tire, almost 41 inches tall, whatever that is in metric, I forget. Uh, I don't know. It's big and nice and wide, 12 inches wide. And that gives us lots of flotation that if we want to go uh, onto a beach or sand or softer ground, we can deflate our tire and our footprint becomes really big. Yeah. And then we float on whatever we're on. Okay, now at the front, uh, this is a custom built bumper. Uh, it holds a 17,500 pound winch and I built it to be as compact as possible. We also have compressed air right here at the front bumper for reinflating our tires after we've been on sand or whatever. And it, it's really heavy and stable. Yeah, I mean. this is what two centimeter thick iron yeah. bar and that goes all the way into the frame rails and is fastened very, very strong into yeah. the frame. So you can you could hang the truck by this one hook and it it's fine. It was engineered by my friend Taylor, who's a heavy industrial machinery designer. He okay. makes mining equipment and heavy stuff. And so some clever design uh, features are these side pieces are bolted on. And we did that because should I have a collision and hit something so badly that this bumper folds in and, and hits my tires and I can't move because it's hitting the tire, I can unbolt that and set it aside to at least get out of where we are. What, what are you going to hit to? You know, a big tree, for example. Yeah, okay, okay, maybe a tree. So Jason, what about the maintenance of the engine? I mean, if I look at our car, it's way older, but we have to check for oil and everything. So first question, how much gasoline does it take for, maybe you know it in kilometers, 100 yeah, km? Yeah, I, I do. It uses zero gasoline. It's a diesel engine. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, it uses, uh, before the recent modifications, I was getting 17 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, with the, the more horsepower parts we've added, it's going to be less. Uh, I'm hoping it's not 20, 21 maybe. Okay. But uh, of course that depends on how heavy your right foot is. If you drive it politely and yeah and be reasonable about it as we often try to be just yeah. uh, we don't want to put too much stress on the vehicle so if you keep your rpms reasonable and be nice about it i'm hoping it's still between 17 and 20. okay and when you go off-road uh well off-road obviously it's uh, more difficult ground and the wheels sink in and you're pushing through sand and dirt um, but i don't have separate numbers for off-road. How is the transmission? Is it automatic? No, nope. uh, we, we intentionally sought out this chassis yeah. because it had the 7.3 liter international diesel, manual six-speed transmission, manual two-speed transfer case, manual hubs, um, just to reduce the number of automatic things that were prone to problem yeah. and would cause us some problem on the road. And this is our uh, driver's side compartment. I have some quick access camp accoutrement here. All of our electric uh, panels I built myself. And in fact, the circuit boards I designed myself in this campground. We have 11.52 kilowatts of lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's 20 cells wired in four series, five parallel. So that's how much amps? 900 amp hours at 12 volts. Oh. Uh, 13.5 volts. Uh, our water system uses stainless steel uh, drink kegs. These were used in the Pepsi and Coke industry for many years, but they've moved away from that and are going to uh, cardboard boxes with bags and stuff like that. So uh, they're great because you know, I can open them up, clean them out, uh, wire them in series. If I have one that's leaking, I can remove it, which I don't have that problem, but I find it's modular, so I have the option to do that if I need to. And how much liter you have in total now? 100 liters. 100. In fact, <laughs> I didn't intend to do this, uh, but this is a smaller version. This is a half size, and we use this for showering. I'm not going to... So that's 10 liters? 10 liters. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you. Why not? Germans love innovative ideas, yeah? Yes, yeah, sure. Good. So this is our outdoor shower system. Uh, 
we can fill it with whatever stream or creek or tap water we want. The top of the keg opens as such. We fill it with water and then I have an electric heater which I use our solar power to heat to the temperature controlled uh, setting that we like, 42.4 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Put this in here, seals it up and then add 40 PSI of compressed air which yeah. is equivalent to uh, tap pressure approximately, yeah. Yeah. household water pressure. Yeah. And then these are the quick connect fittings, connects like that. And then I can take this and my pop-up shower tent if necessary, or just go in the trees and hang this on a tree branch. Yeah. That's nice. So again, here's this keg uh, lid. This is an oval lid that goes in and then locks like that, if you could hold that. Sure. And I demonstrate if I, if we get this full of sand, as you can see, there's some yeah. residue of sand and stuff in there. We can get our hands in, clean it out real good. Yeah. Uh, it's stainless steel. So if I get some bad disease ditch water with cow manure in it, I can bleach it or do anything I need to, to, to clean it to out. Clean it, yeah. And That's really good. Yeah. This one, uh, I bought new, in fact, because these ones are a little big to carry like this, to yeah, go sure. shower behind a tree, guess, yeah. uh, especially for Kara. So this was a nice convenient size. So where you got the idea from? I Just don't know. Uh, I was at a metal salvage yard and they had these here. And okay. I thought, man, that's an easy, easy way to make a tank. Yeah. And uh, because we have compressed air on board anyway, yeah. we have one air compressor here. Uh, at the back and then two more up here at the front of this compartment uh, for redundancy for airing up our tires also our solar slide mechanism yeah. is uh, air powered and some other things we're, we're dependent on air so i thought it was good to have compressed air in redundant and then it's also for my water because if my air pump fails i can't inflate my tires with a water pump right but you can move your water with the air. But I can move my water with the air. Yeah. All right, coming around the back here now, from the bottom to the top, I guess. Uh, this is our bumper. It's a six inch square box section, one quarter inch thick walls. So it's uh, strong enough that we can use it as our air tank. So two of our three compressors are fed into here and it acts as a, uh, about a 30 gallon air tank. That's a nice idea because otherwise it's just a waste of tube. Right, yeah. yeah, so I made it a little heavier so that it can operate as that air tank. Then here you'll note two uh, Bendex semi-brake pots. These are used on big semi-trailers as an air brake mechanism. But because they have such a big surface area on the diaphragm, those two are pulling the box down with 10,000 pounds of force against the frame rails. Okay, so, and then it's fixed to the frame and Right, so the box is mounted rigidly, semi-rigidly at the front of the box, yeah. and then here at the back it's being pulled down to the two frame rails, yeah. it's clamped with lots of force, and then if we need to go off-road where the frame is going to twist, and we don't want that twist transferred up into our box, you can uh, release the pressure from the pots, yeah. and then it'll pivot and sort of rock like this. Okay. So it's similar to the European typical uh, three-point mounting system but it's a little bit of a cheat because that allows me to keep the height down. Okay. A, a proper three-point mount has this much space between the frame and the box. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't want it to be any higher than needed. Yeah, sure. So yeah. then moving up uh, to the bumper, we have connected our spare tire mount. And that's all not connected to the box, of course. No, this is all, yeah. uh, all to the frame and the bumper. The box pivots on its own behind this. And uh, a point there for us to use pulleys to get the tire down or up. We have an AT Overland uh, 20 liter diesel tank. And here is our mini split air conditioner compressor. Yeah, that's the best to have an air conditioner in the car. And we sometimes wish we would have one too. So this one pulls about 500 watts yeah. on average, 800 peak. And uh, we have 1.5 kilowatts of solar on the roof, which in real world terms will get you 900 to 1000 watts of production so it's enough that we can run our air conditioner as long as there's sun and you made a video about the air conditioner we made it in here so if you're interested you can watch it on their channel yeah thanks for that yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and so that takes us to our solar. Uh, we'll move around the side here and you we know, can show you. One very important part ah. is, I mean, they said they built a truck before, but they also built a whole box. That's also, you can look on their channel. They did the framing and you did the plastic, some, what was the name inside? Uh, that's a fiberglass honeycomb composite panel. So about uh, 40 millimeters thick honey, yeah. honeycomb, yeah. like uh, honeycomb. See photo here. And uh, yeah, then that's bonded to the inside of the aluminum exoskeleton, which frames the perimeter of the whole, the whole camper box. So now I'll direct your attention to our rooftop. We originally had four solar panels, uh, which powered everything in the truck, uh, but we've sometimes found that wasn't enough. So I made this solar uh, sliding mechanism that uses compressed air and pneumatic cylinders. It's doubled our solar uh, production right now in three seconds i mean it not takes a half an hour to no no slide it out it's like i did it that way because uh, i thought i knew myself well enough to know that if i had to go up and climb up and do this and put this here or ground solar when we first bought them in fact i intended to do this eventually but i just took the four solar panels inside and then carried them out and laid them out for the extra charge but I only did that two days on the trip of yeah, yeah. 14 days because it's just too big of a hassle. Right. And so I wanted something that I knew would be fast. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm operating it here manually now, but most often it's handled automatically by the computer that uh, detects that it's sunny and, and we're not driving and puts them out. If I jump in the truck now and start the truck, they'll all pull in oh, yeah. as we drive away. And you put all the programs you write by yourself too. yep it's they're pretty basic python scripts running on uh, raspberry pi uh, i'm not a an amazing programmer but i make do yeah so yeah that's uh, 1.5 kilowatts of solar uh, which in real world terms makes about 900 to 1100 uh, peak yeah. uh, when you consider losses from heat and so on so and you just use electricity in the Car yeah, or exactly. Go so we're 100% solar powered in our living quarters. All of our phones, laptop, drones, uh, air conditioner, cooking, everything is 100% electric, solar powered. We have no propane, no diesel cooktop, and our living quarters take no power from our engine. We have no connection between the two, in fact. So Oh, so you don't use a booster from the no. engine to charge the batteries? No. It, and that's a common criticism. A lot of people suggest, oh, you should get a booster and charge off your engine. That would sure be smart. Uh, but in, uh, in real practical terms, it would cost $1.5 to $2 per kilowatt hour to charge yeah. uh, lithium batteries from diesel or gas. Uh, and there was some losses in efficiency if you're running... Uh, an alternator on an engine it's they're very inefficient and even if you have a high efficiency honda generator that was built for generating power they're still not as efficient uh not a very efficient way of making uh, power. power and so even if it costs best case scenario a dollar per kilowatt that would cost us eleven dollars every time we charge our battery from the engine yeah yeah, yeah. so uh for me, it made more sense to spend that money on a little more solar that yeah. makes power all the time. I don't need to hear it. And, uh, right. Yeah. Cool. Like the, you can flip it in now too, for the car. Oh yeah. Uh, I also have a little app on my phone, but I don't have my phone on me in. Ready to go, but I'm gonna put it back out because I need some solar. We also put lights under the panels here. You can see here for nighttime. They're not super bright, but they make a nice glow here, adequate for for whatever. So Kara, we mentioned earlier she wanted the truck and uh, she had the idea so yes. we're now going to the inside Kara, is there something that you said you want um, special or was it like you know you said you wanted the truck 
Yeah. The outside was now set. So was the inside also all your idea or? Well, my requirements, because we've had a few other campers before this, um, I wanted a permanently set up bed. I didn't want to have to set up the dinette into a bed and vice versa, and a permanent set up dinette. Um, and of course, a bathroom. That was really important to me. Okay. <laughs> so I'll give you a tour. All right, here's the inside. Um, behind me here is our bed. This is uh, about a double, a little bit bigger than a double. Um, we had a custom mattress made so that it would fit the space that we have here. And then underneath we have a frolly system, which Check is yep. amazing. This is a spring system that you can add under your RV mattress um, so you don't get any condensation or mold under your mattress. Yeah. Okay. This is great. And so do you have something to, do you have a ladder or something that you go up or do you just go over the bank? So we have a, a step that comes out under here that we can pop out, which yeah. then we can just climb up. Um, and then when we don't need it, tuck it away so we have a little bit more space. Cool. And this is awesome. This is all storage. Yeah, we have a ton of storage. Actually, you can fit two bins in here. Yep. So um, clothing storage. And then over here, we just have little drawers for like electronic storage and, mm -hmm. and little things like that. Um, this bottom drawer is a charge drawer, so we can charge up our, our cell phones in there. Oh, wow. Which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we have, to, we have to go back to that again. This oh, is yeah. Why, because, guys, this truck... It's amazing. I mean, it's all about the technical stuff and we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, charge your GoPro, throw your cell phone on. We'll zoom in here so you can see it yeah. in a bit. Yeah. Wow. And then on this side, we have our dinette um, and it's definitely roomy. We have lots of space to sit or we can just sit back and relax. And then um, this is also just a really nice workspace. Um, we have our, um, our laptop and then behind you, we have a computer monitor. So then when we're working, we can have dual monitors if we're doing video editing or um, if we're doing any work on the road. And yeah, just kind of a cozy space to hang out and relax. That's why, look, I'm spreading out. <laughs> and as you guys know, this is what we missed in our trek because we thought we'd be outside all the time, but this is really, really nice. And yeah, so good thinking because it makes a change because we only yeah. have the bed area, right, Christian? And then it's like, yeah, but it's really comfy and it's a really good place to work also mm -hmm. because you also can sit, you know, with your back and really nice. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> now to the kitchen. Um, we have a lot of counter space. That was really important to me because I love to cook. So I want it to have a huge counter. Uh, over here we have um, a sink. It's just a, a little bar sink that we picked up at Home Depot. And you can see we have two water taps. Uh, one is our drinking water and one is our wash mm -hmm. water. And then over here we have uh, induction cooktop, which I really love. Um, it's just easy and instant on instant off yeah. um, and also nice because it's flat so i can use that as more counter space and then over here we have an ingle fridge freezer so you can set it to be mm -hmm. a fridge or a freezer mm -hmm. uh, which is really nice i have it to a freezer right now and then we have um, a fridge on the other side which i'll show you guys in a bit and we have more storage <laughs> really deep um, drawers here lots lots of kitchen storage oh wow and jason designed a really cool system that when we um, hit our brake pedal when we're ready to go somewhere the drawers you lock didn't hear that but i heard it went ding isn't that awesome <laughs> Which is great because the worst is when you forget to lock the drawers and then you get out and yeah. to your location for the night and everything's on the floor. So that's a nice system. And then when I want, I can just unlock them. There we go. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, oh gosh, this is great. So Kara, when we built our truck, we were like, oh, it all has to be about the propane because we like the open fire and thing. Yeah. And this is awesome because look, it's only one plate and then you have more room for mm -hmm. cooking so 
how do you how do you handle it? Because we have now four play. Uh, how do you say cooking? We, four, four, four burners, yeah. And we only yeah. need two. You only so need two, yeah. This is, wow. And so you're happy with this? Yes. I, usually you just, I can make it work. I just cook one thing, put it aside, mm -hmm. cook another. Um, True Induction does make a dual burner one. So if you're considering a build and you want two burners, they do have that. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, for our needs, it's been good. Wonderful. So that's another thing. If you don't have to always have propane you can also have the electricity one right mm -hmm. and the induction is just working out fine for you yes yes i really like it cool yeah and under the dinette here we have our isotherm fridge pulls out and we also have a little mini freezer up here so um, we can either have two fridges uh, with a little mini freezer or fridge and freezer yep perfect Sometimes we miss the freezer because, yeah, we, we didn't have the space, but it's nice to have both, right? Yeah, it is It is a nice convenience. We went several years when we were uh, building and just using the truck on weekends and holidays. We only had just the, just the fridge. And then once we had fridge and freezer, it was like, very yeah, luxurious. <laughs> so you get to store all the yummy food that you need when yeah. you're overlanding and you were having desire for pizza. So yes. you can have pizza. <laughs> And behind me, you can see we have more storage. Uh, we have uh, little storage bins here, um, and we have straps that we can put on when we're doing more extreme off-road. For the most part, uh, if you're just driving around town, you don't really need it. They have the little lips here. Yeah. But um, just bins to organize everything. And then uh, behind me on this side, we have a composting toilet. Uh, nature's head composting toilet um, and we we like it it's been great this is our composting toilet and we've got a good handle here for, for those really <laughs> rough ones um, of course we are a little bit skeptical originally about mm -hmm. composting yeah. toilet and how that would work on the road but um, it's worked really well for us yeah but you guys only have the toilet, but no shower back there. That's right, no shower. Um, our original plans, this was going to be uh, a shower area, which we could always still turn it into that if we wanted. But um, as we were using the truck before it was complete, um, we just found that we didn't really need an mm -hmm. indoor shower. And then you have the humidity and all the other problems associated with that. So um, our solution, we have the shower system that Jason showed you earlier, and actually our front entranceway can also uh, serve as a shower as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. And then back here, I guess the other things of interest is the other part of our air conditioner um, lives back here on the shelf. Okay. So. And then it just ducks around to behind your head there. Oh, and comes out here. then you have nice cold air. <laughs> Okay, Google, turn on the air conditioner. Okay, AC on. <laughs> okay, Google, turn on the fan. Here's some fan action for you. <laughs> and now the Max Air fan is on. <laughs> so, Jason, you put a lot of technical stuff in here. As we could hear, you can speak to Google and say whatever. Mm -hmm. you have to do but you have more on your phone on the app right so, show so us I'll that. show you the phone first uh, all the electronics that you saw in the outside compartment that's all controlled uh, via a cloud-based blink server or we have a local blink server running on a server in the truck on a Raspberry Pi and that allows me to uh, control the brightness of our lights for example turn them on turn the inverter on and off our light bars outside, uh, rear floodlights, the solar panels. I can also manually control from here uh, our water system. Uh, if you turn on the uh, black tap just a little bit, you can see here this uh, flow rate meter yeah. is measuring all of our water consumption. And then we can see here our remaining water supply and it also graphs our water consumption over time. 
So yeah, if you're interested in some of the more technical stuff about the truck, we've kind of glazed over it for brevity, but if you're interested in uh, the solar powered air conditioning or my uh, pneumatic solar powered slides or voice activated doodads, I've got over a hundred videos on our YouTube channel. So if you're coming from their channel, uh, you can come to Everlanders on YouTube and see that. And if you're an Everlander subscriber, head over to their YouTube channel. Uh, it's been mostly German in the past. Yeah, but with the most with subtitles, so it's... Yeah, it's all subtitled, so that's yeah. good. Uh, but they're considering switching some of their stuff over to English, so yeah. subscribe to them. I know how it was when we were a smaller YouTube channel. It felt like we were fighting the good fight. Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in overlanding, uh, they started, what, in October? A year ago, yeah. And uh, sent their truck from Germany to yeah. Baltimore, went through the USA, and they've been kind of on the same path as us. Yeah. Stuck at Guatemala because we couldn't go any further. Yeah. And they actually made it into Guatemala. Yeah. As all of you guys probably know, because you watched their channel already. <laughs> anyway, in this page here, you can see our solar production over time. Uh, you can see our state of charge shown here in this green line. And it's going down. As you know, it's been cloudy and rainy the last few days, and yeah. we've been parked under the trees. So we're actually pretty low. And our solar input is zero on the lower sets of panels you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back out. So loud. Much manliness. Yeah. Okay, so now this solar current on the lower sets of panels is back up at 18 and you can see the uh, BMS is monitoring each of our banks of cells and shows the voltage of each bank. So one of this green one is for? Five. Five cells. Yes. Oh, yeah. Five cells in a supercell parallel bank. Yeah. So anyway, that's the uh, app. So we can control stuff from the app and with our voice, as I mentioned. But we also have a little keyboard here uh, that's really handy, handy uh, location for lights off, lights on, mm -hmm. uh, solar in, out, water pressure, uh, inverter on, off, if we need to force it on. So that's handy. Uh, and uh, something we didn't really intend it was uh, this box here is actually where we keep our ca some of our camera gear and our passports and stuff and the uh, side effect of that is that when it's pulled away pneumatically there's 150 pounds of air pulling that ah, box in so it's like a safe you can't get at it ah. and i didn't ever intend it that way but it just worked out perfect yep and you also have a heating for the, when you went to alaska yes we have uh, a heater very similar to yours we have the S bar D2 yeah. uh, Airtronic, so a two kilowatt air heater, and it lives underneath the sink in a hidden compartment. And our chassis uh, engine also has a uh, S bar D5, yeah. five kilowatt hydronic engine coolant heater to preheat when you're in very cold climates. To stay online and for the internet, you have your own system in here, like yep. a router or something? Yeah, we, it's buried away, can't see it very easily, but we have a MoFi 4500 LTE router. Uh, it's nice because we can put a SIM card in there and then create a Wi-Fi hotspot around our truck, which our phones can use. Mm -hmm. And then if we're a very long way from a tower, uh, we have directional antennas on a motorized mast that we can point at the cell phone tower to get very long distance uh, signal and uh, then our phone's battery doesn't struggle so hard to reach the tower it just yeah. needs to go to wi-fi and yeah. then the truck wi-fi solar powered gets right. all the way to the tower that's really nice and uh, the model we have is nice because if we're at a location with wi-fi i can bridge it and join the wi-fi network and then all of the devices in the truck still connect to the truck's wi-fi mm -hmm. but it's routed through the Wi-Fi connection that we're connected to. Yeah, that's well, pretty nice. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the tour and got some fresh ideas for your overland build. It's been our pleasure to have you guys over, and it's been a lot of fun hanging out lately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but it was great that you had the time to show us your yeah. car. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I mean, we missed a lot of details, but um, you can see them on the Everlander channel. They made tons of video about it. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe Everlanders. Don't forget to subscribe Apple on the Road. And please leave us a comment how you enjoyed or not the English speaking version of the video. Please leave a comment down below because it would really interest us. And yeah, we see you, see you guys next time. <laughs> Adios. Bye. Bye.